Chloe opened the truck door, stuffed her head behind her seat, and sat beside and sat herself in a sharp bitter sigh. She really fucked up again. If you went with Chloe with a chaotic build, weren't you supposed to avoid consistently shitty plays? Mmm, are you? I don't know. I thought that was like lawfully. She was bound to land a critical hit sooner or later, right? Chloe would just, you know, focus on, on getting her and Max straight to Caulfield. I feel like Chloe is the type of person who can't really multi multitask like emotions and, and, and like thought wise. She's kind of single minded. And that's nothing wrong with that. Like, the fact here, like, Chloe has trouble expressing herself, like, her heart in terms of serious conversations about relationships and and psychological stuff that's going on with her so she ends up kind of like being emotional like her tantrums and stuff instead of actually communicating so that's her problem like max seems to be the opposite she knows how to communicate and it frustrates her that chloe couldn't do the same so there's this big hole and i i know this isn't like a rare uncommon or like it's not even i would say it wouldn't be wrong because i know people who are like that and struggle with expressing themselves it's just their personality so like i know it's, it kind of makes them struggle in a relationship unless you can find ways to express yourself in certain gestures that are very obvious or well you know relationships are so tricky unless it's something completely genuine and sincere that both parties can actually feel it and no words are needed and both are kind of understanding but you know how relationships like you cannot think of one relationship is ever like perfect there's always going to be some bumps whether it's like um boyfriend girlfriend or whatever or is it marriage or even best friendships as well like in the game you see like chloe and max always i mean always but there's a lot of arguments and and like uh, con contradictions and conflicts as well like their relationship is not perfect Chloe is a really hard person to deal with and and it, it's kind of tied to her upbringing, her experiences and her influences, her peer influences. So like even personality wise, that's why I was kind of surprised to see how expressive she was in the lighthouse. That it almost seemed out of character despite it being kind of like touching and all. So yeah. Damn it, forgot to unlock the door. The fuck the fuck ups were knocking each other down like dominoes now. After letting Max in, Chloe realized that they still needed a bit of a breather before they hit the road again. Hey. What? Chloe sighed, pushed blue hair out of her face, turned to Max and waited just long enough for Max to speak. Justin Max stepped back, her expression somewhere else. Maxine. Max, never Maxine. What? Uh, nothing. No, never mind. Um, well. Mm, it bugs you when you use your full name or. Not when you say it, I guess. But just. Never mind. Alright, sorry. Could we have a double back for a second? The hell was that about? Go ahead, call her Maxine oodles of times. Freaking tons of times when they were kids. Now all of a sudden it was offensive. <laughs> it's the hormones and, and stuff. Like yeah. Like sure Max got on Yeah, sure, Max got into all that trigger warning culture bullshit now and again, but for real, this just made no sense. Whatever, moving on. Max turned Max is turned to try striking a combo back up because Chloe was sucking money tur monkey turds, you. At the lighthouse, when the storm was passing, that's when I realized it. Chloe nodded compliance, in compliance, eager to hear this out. I mean, I feel so dumb now, I should have seen it. I, uh, I couldn't give you up. A bit speechless, Chloe let Max rent for a spell. I didn't ask for this, I didn't want this, but jumping through time, experiencing and re-experiencing the same but, but different things, it... It all started with you, Chloe. You were what? I, I couldn't have saved you without this. Rewind, fucking rewind power and... The, the, the more I... Max sniff a little bit. Oh. Max, uh, the more I mess with time, the more I... We discovered how fucked up Arcade B was getting by the end of it. It just hit me like a brick. Having you back in my life, that was the gift. That was the power behind. Fucking... Super Max. Yeah, people were speculating like... 
people who chose like sacrifice school ending they thought like well this is just like cancelling every ha- everything we've done all the hard work we have experienced in the week is all gone but that's not exactly true it may be in the overall timeline maybe it exists in a different universe or whatever um but st- like it gave max an opportunity to spend time with her best friend after five years and it also gave chloe something before she left the world i guess i feel like when she dies or becomes a butterfly all the memories will kind of like come to her because i think i don't know how how time travel works I, I actually don't believe it will ever exist because it creates many entities of yourself and like i kind of believe in like souls and stuff so like how many souls will you have that is kind of ridiculous yeah, so it, it gave Max uh, like an opportunity to like spend time with Chloe. So that was a gift, even though she couldn't save Chloe, and that's kind of valuable. That actually like never seeing Chloe or never knowing her and letting her die in the first place when Nathan shot her. So I think she getting her powers is a blessing actually. Max groaned, wiping tears from her eyes. Chloe couldn't take her eyes off of Max, spilling all this out. Alternate timelines alter different realities different ways you could get hurt ways you could hurt others ways the people i love could die i just wanted to stop all of it but maybe that's why the torn the t- max coughed into her sleeve chilling off damn max i realized max was getting so weepy that talking was turning into a problem which was you know a dumb's but you said you're done. We're running time, right? Max nodded hastily, eagerly. Well, Chloe pressed the tips of her two fingers against her own tear ducts, cleaning them out. Then the past is staying in the past, so let's stop fucking with it. Yep, let it go. Focus on the future. Leave it alone, you know? Hmm. Max nodded again in the same way. I was uh, on the cliff, Chloe. I was going to kiss you. Yeah, I know. But I didn't. Like, I feel almost like I did, like I was supposed to, or... Why didn't you? Max shot wildly. In the way that said, I d- don't fucking ask me because I got no that goddamn clue and I should've done it. I didn't... She Max finished... Max fished for an explanation. I thought maybe... Koi didn't need Max to finish. She got the picture. I thought maybe you were going to kiss me. What, not with the whole I sacrificed an entire town to keep you in my life bit? Getting warm? It's okay. Chloe tried to assure, still stalling. Max, what I said just now, out there, I uberbogged that. Not that parking lots don't have the charm, but... You're right, first kiss between two awesome ladies like us deserve more than... It was. More romantic than a... Uh, elementary school there... <laughs> I guess it's as romantic as you can get in that situation. Max acted out a small pathetic laugh, came as Max wiped her, marked at her eyes some more. Max Caulfield, did you just sass me? Did you just make a joke? Bravo. Now we're getting somewhere. <laughs> Look at her smirk. <laughs> Chloe chuckled a little, realizing that after that night they'd spent together, that had been a total childish way of squeezing some truth from Max. She hadn't expected Max to take that bait though. Come on, Max was supposed to be grown up after all. So, what you're saying is... Mm, double dare? I've gotta start double daring you more often. <laughs> more more like the other way around. Oh yeah. <laughs> That'd be interesting. Oh, they're holding hands. No, that was a bit of old spark again. But with this whole new spot that had existed back then, hadn't existed back then. Chloe, this is this is super sudden for me. I didn't, I wasn't planning on. Yeah, yeah, I know. What's with the look? Look, it's like this, Max. I Chloe breathed in, exhaled, and rubbed at her cold shoulders. At the lighthouse, shit got real, fucking real, and I like realized how much. And there it was again. That troubling L word hanging out on the tip of Chloe's tongue. No kisses, no donuts, no coffee to cover it up. Chloe wriggled her hand back and forth between herself and Max. She tried rolling for a 20 this time. 
how much you love me, Max. How much I love you. I get that now. Uh, more like 17 or 16, but good enough. Chloe, fin finish your turn. Destiny, luck, whatever. I don't care. You're awesome. We're awesome. But... Hmm... Chloe sifted her nail nails through her dirty hair. I know I said that shit about realities and... But the fact is, and I see it now, it's uber crazy. You have all these memories with me. All this time we spent together in other realities is all there in your head. But only some of that's in mine. Hmm, that's kind of true. Like, Max has more memories of Chloe than she has of her. So that's not really equal. Max was finally le leveling out and Chloe was getting this off her chest. Some of those mem moments, those memories, some of those aren't really ours. They're yours. Like, they are ours for you, but whatever, you've been through and and you don't and you don't need to explain any more of it. Fuck, please, don't my head can't take any more of this right now, and neither can yours. This past week, what I told you about, making me laugh and smile, that was real too. For both of us. For me. Damn it, now Chloe was starting to cry. How much blood and tears and coffee would two teenage chicks spill for each other within premise, pre premises of a coffee shop f on a boring afternoon? Tune in to find out. Oh, all these spelling and grammar and punctuation errors are triggering me so hard. Uh. Max's hands reached out and grabbed Chloe's. Her poor fingers were still trembling. God damn it, they still hadn't cleaned Max's hands up because Chloe kept stalling. Uh, let's get those hands uh, taken care of while you're wasting time listening to my dumbass. Chloe decided popping open the glove compartment in a hurry. Chloe really leaned over, hoping her arms would block that car carton of cigarettes from Max's sight. And also that pair of condoms. <laughs> and also that half joint smoke. Half smoke joint. <laughs> oh, Chloe. Always prepared. First aid kit. Boom. All the emergency comp- all the emergency stuff in that compartment, eh? Chloe wasn't a cleric or whatever what other shit classes did these healy bits, but how hard could it be, right? Max helped her figure out which thing was the disinfectant and how to apply it, and then get gauze, get the gauze wrapped around and well it was a total well it was a total overkill for just some scraped skin, but fuck it. Max deserves whatever was gonna help right then. Plus, through going through the first aid, motions gave both of them the task to focus on for a couple of minutes. Besides each other's awkward faces, anyways. Max sighed with some relief, twisting her hands on her wrist a little as she got the feel off for the bandages. She looked like she'd been in a street fight or something. Heh, <laughs> more like she fought with a street and the street won, am I right? Huh. Thanks. Okay, uh, we should be earnest for once. Since Max likes that. Yeah. I got you covered, Max. Looking out for you. Good. Cause I really need it lately. I mean, you need me, right? Uh, Ops? For sure. Hella. Yeah, yeah. Starting to wonder if you use that word more than I do, Caulfield. And yeah, maybe. Then. Things settle back into Auckland. Um, you were... Right, yeah, I... Phew. Going for it. Mmm... Um, I think we should talk about it first. Serious. Maxine. Uh, Max. I... Shit. It's okay, seriously. For sure? For sure, it's okay if you say it. Oh. Okay, uh... So this, whatever this is, with us? Romantic tension? Uh, again with the sass, Captain Zazie Pen's proud of you. Romantic tension. Chloe repeated facetiously, nodding with exaggeration. I mean, it's kind of hella exciting, no denying that, but there's... It's kind of... Hmm, Max's expression went dire, and Chloe knew what was on the tip of both of the tongue. But Max had the courage to say it out loud. Rachel, alright, we're addressing this issue. Good. Max was whispering in a dark tone. Fuck, Chloe, this is exactly why I said I shouldn't. It was in this moment that Chloe finally accepted the fact that shit was a little fucked up. The two of them were both feeling guilty over someone who wasn't around anymore. 
Someone who had lied to Chloe, played her like a freaking fiddle. Maybe Rachel had meant to, maybe she hadn't, but it happened all the same. Rachel had been planning on just, just leaving with Frank, leaving Chloe behind and... Shit. Ugh, Rachel hadn't mean to hurt Chloe. It wasn't like she wanted to hurt Chloe. Yeah. I mean, like, if I think in this situation, Chloe thought it was a two-sided love, but in reality, it's actually Chloe only falling for Rachel and Rachel still, like, just treating her like a best friend. And she was... Well, maybe, like, I think Rachel might know Chloe had feelings for her, but uh, she didn't know how to explain it to her or kind of play it off. So, kind of... I don't know, like, kind of pity love... And she sure as hell didn't deserve what happened. Chloe may, uh, Chloe, had Chloe maybe been in denial the whole time, stalling, clinging onto someone who didn't feel like the same way, only to bring them down. Mm, because I was thinking like, um, in episode 5, Jefferson actually mentioned like, they're fucking each other in heaven. So like, Jefferson knows that some romance between Chloe and Rachel who used to be in his class. So like... Mm, were they actually a thing back then? We don't really know. It was never talked about. Like we never know if like they they had any intimacy in like that romantic sense. And she'd done it all over again. Here with Max, practically twisted Max's heart into caring about her back. Yeah, it's all more or less the same. Rachel didn't deserve what happened. Neither did Max. Max hadn't even asked for this shit. Chloe had, had grabbed her, pulled her in, used her power, and now Max Coffee was falling in love with her. How selfish she'd been. And Chloe was falling for her too, for those dorky vibes and the way she just leaned, learning to stick up for herself. Filling in that old void while filling in a fresh one at the same time. But were they actually falling for each other or just fall, falling for anything that wasn't loneliness? Uh huh. Tough one. Nothing was okay, nothing was fine. Shit was hella fucked up. That didn't mean they should bury themselves in it, though. Rachel had independently brought them together. And, like, Rachel wouldn't wanted them to be happy, right? Maybe it's destiny. I feel like the credits, credits person, Chloe. Max was grumbling, but at least she wasn't crying again. Maybe she cried her eyes dry now. I could've saved them, but... Instead, I made such a selfish... Hey, no, what did I say about that shit? Gotta let it go, it's happened, it's happened. A uh, what? Chloe grinned, slanting her brows with mischief. I dare ya, I double dare ya, motherfucker. Say what one more goddamn time. Chloe, you weird little. Max snickered through her wispy breaths. Uh, that was... I don't know, I was trying to do a double reference. The pop vision bit, plus back to the daring you to kiss me thing from the other day. Uh-huh. Max shook her head lightly, opting to scoop up Chloe's hand. Max pressed herself against Chloe's side for a moment, both of their hearts stumping against each other's ribs. Chloe had kind of been hoping for another kiss actually. Was that fucked up? Chloe could really use more kissing right about then. Chloe felt Max's back expanding against her chest. Max sniffled, sighed out shakily, cuddled her head against Chloe's neck. Nah, Max didn't need the kissing at the moment, huh? Yep, just be there for her. What she needed was Chloe being there, just right, the right there this time. Maybe it was really enough. I'm so fucking sorry, Max. You didn't ask for all this crap. You deserve better than. I don't deserve shit. Well, as it turns out, I am pretty shit, but you're still stuck with me. <laughs> Where'd the girl, Chloe? Chloe. Another teammate confused laugh. Everything is so screwed right now, but. Well, we're on the same page there, Max. All I know is that I need you, Chloe. I got good news for you then, Max. I meant it when I said I was always going to be with you. Forever, right? Chloe knew that Max was calling back at their moments on the cliff. Yep. And that was before the prospect of hot makeout sessions. <laughs> Max puffed and amused through her nose. <laughs> so, I mean, now that's basically a shoe in Chloe dropped her hug's tightness a couple notches but held Max for another minute or so. Chloe noticed that their breathing started sinking up. You're amazing, Maxine. Shit happened and it's done now. Maybe we deserve to feel horrible over it? I don't know. But we're in this time to- We're in this together. We're all in this together. <laughs> <laughs> Chloe 
Chloe gave Max's body a gentle shake. She kissed the top of Max's head. She rubbed her hands across Max's arm. Mushy stuff ain't what I'm good at, but for you, I'll try anything once. Remember that later, when we're both in your bed. <laughs> oh, oh, gross. Max killed wriggling her style, Chloe's grip playfully. You're gross. To the Max, Max. Chloe ruffled Max's hair as they shuffled their positions, getting ready to hit the road. Hey, you still hungry? You still got a donut waiting for you. Actually, yeah. I brought uh, I brought all the hunger, huh? I have that effect on people. <laughs> By the way, pe apple fritter, huh? Can never go wrong. Hmm, takes me back. Yep. You ready to go? Sure, but st we still should call our parents. In saying this, Max dragged the extremely brief moment back to a serious place. Uh, I did offer to do that, huh? You did. Welp. Chloe retrieved her phone, then gawked at it fretfully. Uh, I'm gonna get us back on the road, real late, as in a, real late enough as it is. Chloe handed her phone to Max. Call your folks up, put them on speaker for me, and we'll fill them in. Well, fill them in enough anyway. Sure. So, like... This is gonna be a hella awkward, huh? Not as awkward as kissing on our asses in the middle of a parking lot. <laughs> Shut up and eat your freaking fritter, Max. Okay. Mmm. Before you can live, a part of you has to die. You have to let go of what could have been, how you should have acted, and what you wish you would have said differently. You have to accept that you can't change the past experiences, opinions of others at that moment in time, or outcomes from their choices or yours. When you fully recognize that truth, then you will understand the true meaning of forgiveness of yourself and others. From this point, you will finally be free. Shannon L. Adler Hmm. Have I heard that before? Chapter 2 Finish Okay. That's... I guess that's the end of it. Oh, chapter 2. But I think... Um, if I'm, I recall, this game only has two chapters, and I think that's a pretty good end to it. Like, as long as exploring Maxis and Chloe's um, struggles after the tornado hit the bay. Because, like, we kind of saw a bit of what Max went through after sacrifice uh, Chloe ending, but not much on the sacrifice bay. Because people are like, speculating things like um, how they would spend their lives, and. That's like the thing with what they would do. So it was all more positive and whimsical. Oh wait, is this more? Uh, one was just like sub pictures. Yep, that's the uh, end of it. Um, yeah, what was I saying? Like, yeah, the people speculate like, um, okay, like they probably live happily ever after. They had some <laughs> intimacy. Uh, I'll find out for that part, and uh, they went traveling all together on their own. To like Chloe's broke and Max is just a college student who is kind of broke, and so like this, I, I really like this because it explores the kind of darker side of things, which was quite of Life is Strange actually focused a lot on, which makes it quite unique than other like um, click point story games that revolve around teenage drama. I guess it's just like sci-fi and teenage drama a bit, but it fo focuses a lot on the teenage struggles and drama which can be boring at times without any action but like when it focuses on serious issues like suicide bullying rape and and like uh, killing and drugs and then like a lot of foolery and stuff like that uh yeah so it brings surrealism into the game so it makes it kind of more relatable in a lot of things um chloe's behaviors her struggles max's struggles and some of the characters like Kate as well. And yeah, so this game, this visual novel, it explores um, what is going on in Max's head and all the regret she's possibly feeling. And how Chloe is also coping with Max as well. So um, what I... S like finding survivors. Why didn't they find survivors? That's still like not really touched on. Because this is basically a fan, fan uh, made thing. But even the game itself, original game, had left a lot of things untouched. So that gives the um, fans like us to ex create our own story and make things interesting. Th that's how like roleplay and like fanfics arise. 
If everything's written for you, it's, it's kind of boring. There's nothing much to expand on. Or like, you can use your imagination, I guess. But the more gaps there to fill, there's like some possibilities to fill in. Like, whether Max and Chloe actually become official or something. So, um, in this, yeah, they did like explore that. Like, they, they weren't really straight away like in love. Because there's like you can't, everything's going on like people are dying and like, and it's realistic that there were not there wasn't a kiss in the sacrifice um, uh, bay ending where there's a kiss in sacrifice Chloe because that's the only opportunity Max the last opportunity Max has to express her love for Chloe, right? As in sacrifice bay, she still has that opportunity. Whether it's appropriate to address that issue in the certain situation where you're going through all this trauma and. And struggle. That's that's a different story. So I really like how this uh, vision novel touch on all the darkness and how realistic they are in that darkness because life does seem dark, especially when things like this happen, when people die, and you have some responsibility to it. But as you can see, Max was in pretty shitty state. Much more than what we saw in the Sacrifice Bay ending. She did look sad, but she kind of is happy when Chloe like, um, like squeezes her shoulder and stuff. But that's just a bit of it. Like that regret's gonna stick with her for the rest of her life. But the thing is, are you gonna regret it for the rest of your life, or are you gonna move on? So I like how this seems like depressive, but it actually doesn't ignore that issue because. Like how life vision doesn't ignore the issues of bullying and, and, and suicide and stuff. It's very sensitive topics. So sensitive topics, like in this case, I think it's depression because something bad happened in your life and you have some burden and things look hopeless and bleak. How are you going to deal with that? That's still the issue of Max's uh, physical health, but that's a different issue. Totally, we're focusing more on her mental state. So um, this goes back to topics about depression, which Kate kind of was uh, suffering in the game but it was only like what was the, the means to an end was like suicide and if not what was the solution um it the solution does seem pretty simple which was max kind of reaching out to her or having someone in your life reaching out to you and i know in like maybe we think this is easier when it's like portrayed on screen but in real life it's much harder and i know this myself because i've been through depression myself and I was on the brink of attempting suicide myself. So, like, take this opportunity to talk about depression and how it's being addressed. So, I have quite a handful of friends who are going through depression. I have one friend who has been in depression for 14 years and he is still struggling to find that happiness in his life. So, they say the cure to depression is basically finding happiness. So, that's the thing is how you define happiness and how would you find it. For what I feel as someone who has been depressed and for others I observe, they kind of rely on an outside source. So that is only like 10% true. Like most of the happiness only comes from yourself. Like if you rely on others or external factors to make you happy, then you can never be truly happy. And the thing is about depression is we need support. Yeah, most of us we need support. We need support from our family, from our best friends. And so what happens if you don't have that large extent of a family or friends? We could always try to look in anything positive in life. So I believe everyone, every single person on this earth has one positivity in them. Whether they could be going through like, they have like a cancer and they're from a poor family in a country ravaged in war. So what I feel is, um, let's, okay, let's not talk about that first. Let's talk about depression in first world countries. Like, like I'm from Singapore and depression is quite high, especially in teenagers actually. And like middle aged adults. The, the cause of the depression is actually quite, what well, I think is quite stupid for me as well. My depression started when I was heavily bullied in um, uh, middle school and I had no one surrounding me. But the fact was, for my, my case, um, I actually had a few people, maybe I didn't have like best friends, but I had people in my class who actually cared about me. But because I focused so much on the negativity, so on the bullies, I focused so much on the bullies that I forget that. It's quite similar with Kit, whereas like she had people like Max, she had people like Warren, she had people like Stella and Alyssa, but I think Stella and Alyssa were not as loyal. So um, she thought too much about what people thought about her and what people did to her instead of focus on the small friends that she had. So if you kind of ignore 
all the negativity and focus on the little bits of positivity and expand on it from yourself within. That's how you overcome and find happiness for yourself. Such that any external factors cannot bring you down. Because the fact is depression is not an external factor, it's everything's inside yourself. So the only way to conquer your depression is to find the strength and happiness within yourself to solve it. And it's not just my case or like in Kate's case, but I think this because the thing is I work in a hospital and I meet a lot of depressive patients, like they they are lonely and they have no family. These are usually elderly, but I think it's quite similar to the, how they are facing it. So um, that's that's the thing. Like, and it's a really tough topic. And and I I know like even my friends say <laughs> finding happiness within itself, thinking positive. That's that's such a stupid answer. It's not that easy. Yeah, I know it's not that easy. But if you think about it, it's not that hard either. I think it it takes a lot of self reflection. Like I feel depression is when you kind of close yourself in and think about all the negativity in your life. So like the only way to solve it is to seek help first of all, professional help, and maybe seek a help from a friend instead of approaching them with a negative mindset. Be more realistic and rational in trying to solve your problems. So for me, I actually fell into depression again, and in, um, after I left, not after sorry. In my final year of university, um, I had some relationship problems and um, I had an injury that affected my performance in sports. I was like a national player and it affected me a lot. So I love bad things happen to me. And after that, everything went downhill. My grades started falling. I started staying at home more. I started crying a lot at night and, and I just I didn't leave my room. And I felt in a, such a bad place. And I, But I still got out of it and how I got out of it is like... There was this sense of hopelessness and and I just thought that what's what's the point of feeling sad? What's the point of staying in my room? What's the point of feeling that I should end my life? It's ending my life is not gonna solve anything. This is like an ordeal in life. Like life is not supposed to be easy. And people think that's also ridiculous because well, the thing is, we are human beings. We may be quite strong and we may be quite intelligent, but we have a lot of flaws and weaknesses and we have to accept that. We have to accept our flaws in ourselves, in our lives, and make the best of it. So, in my case, what I did was I... Things really looked so bad. Like, I was trying to find a job as well and I couldn't find a job. And I just lost, like, some friends and some and my relationship. And my family was always arguing so what I focused on was like trying to make others other people happy so it's it's like finding a joy within myself so like one of my favorite things is to make people laugh or make people happy like seeing other people happy makes me feel happy and it's inclusive of myself I, it's very hard for me to look at others and they feel happy while I'm alone and I feel happy so I try to involve myself in that happiness kind of force myself but in the end it feels natural so um, I just focus on finding ways to solve my problem just even if it's a little steps and even even if I had very little control over it, I just did my best and I just kept trying and trying and trying. And every day I slowly gain hope. I know that all the negativity all the negativity kept climbing back into my head and saying, There's no way you can you can solve this. You have no control. But then I, I just said no no that's, that's, that can't be the answer. There, there's gonna be a way. I just gotta keep hoping and gotta be keep trying. And I try to occupy my mind with things that I like like sports and stuff and eventually I broke out after like um, one and a half years I broke out of it and and now I feel really happy with my life and things started to fall into place um, I still have some issues to fix I guess but I overall feel quite generally happy with myself and I find that I'm able to make others happy as well and be nice to them even if I'm having a bad day and someone brings me down I'll try to be nice to them and like and be quite I mean nice to them but not such that I'm stepped on but I'm quite direct when someone's stepping down on me like I be positive but I also be firm and hey you can't do this to me and why had why do you have to be so negative like why can't we just do this 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 like I'm being firm but I'm also being positive instead of bringing others down I try to bring us to the same level and stay in that positive level so to to be honest I think I feel like a better person now after going through all that shit so I'm actually quite grateful for it so I think end of the day um it's really how with how much how willing you are is how willing you are to 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 improve yourself and improve your life and work hard for it because if we expect things to come to us we're not going to improve we're not going to be happy so i think that's all i have to say about um yeah this this issue and i think we can actually see that in this game like 
Chloe and Maisie only have each other and they have to look for, into the future. It's, you can't look at the present. If you, have to, if you have to look at the present, look at what issues, issue needs to be fixed. And when you look at the future, um, look at what could be possibilities and what you want to work towards. And if you have to look to the past, learn from mistakes you make and try to avoid them. That's how you look at the timeline. I think that's kind of the solution. Of course, there's no guarantees and it takes time and it takes us to be patient. So that's how life works, basically. It's not easy, but if you know how to play your cards right, it can be really great. <laughs> well, this video got quite serious. And I just want to let that off my chest and to all my friends who have had depression or who are going through depression. I've met some of you guys, we spoke on Twitter and I know like I have a couple of more friends who have gone through tough ages and I hope you guys can learn something and try your best to improve inside first before you look at outside. The, the thing is people are very like arrogant because they want when there's an issue between relationships they always say why don't you change or why don't they approach me why don't everyone's like no one wants to be friends with me why why can't why must I always initiate things why must I be the better person like but the thing is why can't you be the better person why do you have to be so arrogant and expect people to do things for you like if you start if you just be more humble like don't get pushed around you have to be firm people will first people appreciate if you take initiative and the initiative to be positive secondly people also need to respect you so you, they don't use you and even people who are douchebags if you know how to um, converse and be firm and stand up for yourself while being nice people will respect you even if they're shitty and maybe you can influence them to be better so always think of it that way okay instead of always being arrogant about things and expecting things to go for people to do things for you because I think that's basically the problem I see, arrogance. I see this more online when people can hide behind screens and they can just like bullshit and stuff. So I, I think that's that's what our, that's a change that our society needs. Yeah, that's uh, basically what I have to say. Anyway, tell me your, your guys' um, thoughts about this, uh, this uh, vision of it and even your thoughts about depression and all these issues that being addressed in life is strange and such. Um, please be friendly in the comments because we want to make a discussion instead of a debate. You know, I don't like to make a debates. I like to discuss things and I don't necessarily agree with your opinions and I don't expect you to agree with mine. But if we can understand each other, that's much more better. So thank you guys for watching Life is Strange or Wounds, the visual novels. Please recommend me some games you want to play. I like all these story based games that actually touch very serious issues or very interesting storylines. So like if you have any games similar, please um recommend me uh, leave me a message in twitter or like in the comments below and please leave a like and share this video and share my videos if you enjoy them this is rochelle signing off see yous.